What's up, everybody? This is Tristan Skyler, and you're locked into the Doghouse Podcast. You're listening to the Doghouse Podcast. We have the greatest guests, sports talk, and entertainment. Enjoy. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Talk Box here, and you're listening to Doghouse Podcast. Y'all, they keep it real, and y'all need to check it out. Stay tuned for all the greatest interviews on the planet. Let's go. And we are back with another episode of the Doghouse Podcast. I am your co-host, Logan, a.k.a. Lil Snake, and alongside me is... I am Luke, a.k.a. Lil Tater. How you doing today, man? I'm doing pretty good today, man. Uh, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, we've had some really good episodes here lately. Um, yeah, having Josh on was uh, it was awesome having him on. Uh, like you said, he's super knowledgeable, and not just Thunder and NBA. Uh, we asked him about OU football and college football in general, and and he had a lot of knowledge on that too. So you know, I really liked this episode uh, that we that we did with Josh, um, aka the Latvian Missile. Uh, from uh, Sports Animal. Um, you know, I had listened to Josh for years uh, come on with Dusty and uh, Mark and uh, Al and Jim and all them uh, down at the Sports Animal. Uh, just kind of getting to know Josh on a more personal level, I, I guess you could say, uh, was, was pretty cool. Um, but, I mean, he's real knowledgeable, you know, coming from Houston and being around the sports world for so long. Uh, he's real knowledgeable. Uh, it was great getting to talk to him, and and now he's completely turned careers and become a professional poker player, which is pretty interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, what a what a career change, you know? That's awesome. But uh, so I guess without further ado, uh, we'll get right into it. So we have uh, Josh Kopelman on the uh, Doghouse Podcast here with us. Uh, how you doing today, Josh? Good, man. Good. It's a, it's a hot Tuesday, that's for sure, but. Uh, usually I take Tuesdays off anyway, so just hanging around, it's basically cool. my Sunday. <laughs> hey, there you go. There yeah, you go. Good. So for our listeners out there, I mean, Josh, I've been listening to you for, I mean, as long as you were on with Jim, uh, as long as I can remember, you know, uh, and, and Dusty and Mark too, I, you used to come on at 12, right? Yeah. They came yeah. on at noon with Mark and Dusty and stayed till four. That's what I, that's what I, I thought. Um, but for our listeners out there that may not know, uh, you know, a list of sports and everything like that. Could you just kind of give us a little bit of who you are and where you're from and any kind of uh, background of, of what you're about? Yeah, I'm from uh, Houston, Texas, originally. Went to the University of Oklahoma. Uh, I worked at the Sports Animal actually about six and a half years, produced for five and a half, did uh, The Monsters of the Midday, actually came up with that name of the show too. Okay. Uh, noon to two, and then uh, did the afternoon sports beat. That was already titled before I got in there, and Jim doesn't want to change it. Not that we tried. Right. Uh, two to four every day. Did that for about five and a half years, and I quit to play poker professionally. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Now I remember on the show, you you guys, you and Jim talking a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot on Thursdays and Fridays, from what I remember about poker. Uh, was that kind of an influence on that decision that you made? Yeah, I, I used to play poker a lot when I was younger. Then Poker Boom happened in like you know oh five ish. Around then, I used to play all the time when I was in high school, and then I kind of stopped playing for a while in college and then Jim would talk about it all the time. So I got back into it and uh, just kind of built up a bankroll, started studying the game a lot more. And uh, eventually, you know, I was making enough to where I could just go out on my own. Wow. That's amazing. That's uh, that's really impressive. So since we're, since we're kind of talking about Jim, you know, um, how, what was, what was it like working with Jim, you know, Jim and Al and Trammell and Dusty and Mark and all the, the sports animal guys. Well, they're all different people. I mean, uh, Jim, like, you know, it was going to be exciting that day. Like, he had something that he was going to either, he was going to talk about that made him mad. Yeah. He was going to go after someone said something earlier. So it was always <laughs> a lot of fun working with him. It was good working with Mark and Dusty also. You learn a lot from them as well, too. So, I mean, uh, they're all good people to work with. B Monthly is Bartlesville City's magazine, published monthly and highlighting the people, places, and events that tell the story of us all. B Monthly is completely local. They're owned and operated right in Bartlesville. 
They're dedicated to providing the community with all the latest up-to-date information about arts, entertainment, and the people in this region, along with the history of this great city and profiles showcasing the people who make the city a vibrant and happy place in which they live, work, and play. They love their community and telling the story of us all each month in Be Monthly, Bartlesville City Magazine. For more on Be Monthly Magazine, go to www.bartlesvillemonthly.com. You can find them on Facebook at Bartlesville Monthly Magazine, and you can also find them on Instagram at B Monthly Magazine. Now back to the show. Cool. How was uh, how was Tram? He sounds like he'd be a real laid back guy, just real cool, real. Yeah, uh, Tram's really knowledgeable. Um, I really like Tram. I think Tram like really respected my work too. I I thought he was really good with uh, Jim and Al when he came on. So I always liked working with Tram. Tram. He's one of the nicest guys that you'll meet. So okay. I, mean, I, I like him. Yeah. Um, now Logan, he showed me the sports animal. It's been a while now, but uh, I started listening to it there for a while, and I really like it. It's a it's a great show, and I know on that show, just to switch gears here a little bit, you guys talk a lot of Thunder and a lot of NBA, and we know personally what's happened to the Thunder the last couple weeks. Can you give your opinion on what the hell's happened to the Thunder <laughs> the last two weeks, and did you expect any of those moves? I did not expect the Paul George move. Um, the Thunder, they found a way to rebuild, that they could rebuild, and they thought this was the way to do it with Paul George asking out. I do want to clarify, they did not have to rebuild. They still had another year and a half of Paul George. They didn't have to send him to the Clippers. They could have got a lot out of him still at the trade deadline this year. If they weren't doing that well, they could have tried to run it back. But they needed to get under the tax line, so the easiest way to do that was trading Paul George for a bunch of picks, trading Russell Westbrook for a few more picks. And now they're kind of in that shape where they don't need to be horrible like the Sixers were, and they can kind of run it through the middle because they have so many assets um, like Houston did, like Utah's done, like Portland's done, where they don't really need to bottom out. And plus, now with the, the change in the lottery, the draft lottery, you don't really need to be the worst team in the NBA. You know, the fourth worst team in the NBA has the same chance as the number one pick as the worst team in the NBA. Yeah. So that's kind of where they're at. They decided, Hey, you know, this is a chance to rebuild and SGA is a pretty good player. Maybe shy, shy Gil is just shy. Gil just Alexander. Um, yeah. Maybe he turns into an all stars, what they're hoping for. Yeah. And they have those picks. Like they might not necessarily use all of them. Like you could end up drafting a star in the, in the teens, like Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert all around there and then you can even trade for another star and then you're right back to being contender so that's what the thunder are going for right there yeah i know they they've got a ton of first round picks like it's insane but as far as you know chris paul getting traded over here with the westbrook deal do you expect thunder to keep him or do you think he's going to miami like everybody's talking about or what do you think about that i think they're going to end up trading him i mean that's just kind of seems the way it's going like they didn't have to trade Russell Westbrook right away. They could have waited to see if they got a better deal, although they might not have, uh, you know, two first round picks and two pick swaps from Houston's pretty good for Westbrook's contract. Um, Chris Paul's contracts can be harder to trade. Um, he's older. He's not as good as Russell Westbrook. Uh, Miami seems the longest destination, but one of the things the Thunder could do, and I haven't really heard too many people talk about this and I don't think they'll do it. But they could do is, you know, you, you, so I talked about earlier, well, hey, you hope SGA becomes a, an all-star. You could draft another one. Well, if that happens within the next three years, you could use Chris Paul's salary to match for a max player that's disgruntled, that doesn't want to be where he is. Um, and let's be real, that's going to happen. That happens every single year in the NBA, and it's even more so now. There's more players that do that. So they could use Chris Paul's contract basically as a, as a trade ship and, you know, send out three first rounders, four first rounders for, I don't know if Kyrie Irving doesn't like it yeah. in, in Brooklyn, for example, and that'll match salaries. But I don't think that will happen. I think he's going to end up being traded this summer and I don't think he'll play a game. You know, Snake, we're always looking for music for our podcast. And what better company to use than Huddy Productions? All of his beats are made from scratch and they sound amazing. If you're an artist looking for someone to work with, or if you're like us and just want to buy instrumentals for your podcast, you have to use Huddy Productions. This is a Huddy Productions. Leases start at $30 and exclusives are negotiable. Beats that are solely produced by Huddy Productions are buy one, get one free, and that excludes any collaborated beats. Follow Huddy Productions on Instagram at Huddy underscore productions, on Twitter at 
Huddy Production. Go to www.huddyproductions.net. Now back to the show. Yeah. And uh, now this last question here, this little bit. Uh, when Russ and, and Harden and KD were all in OKC, you kind of had Russ and KD as the number one option now. Now that Russ is in Houston, many are saying, you know, he's going to be the second option to Harden. How do you think they're going to work together there in Houston? I mean, I think it'll just be like uh, Harden, Chris Paul. I think they'll stagger the minutes. Harden will play like the first nine minutes of the quarter. Westbrook will play the first six minutes and then get subbed out. Maybe Harden might even play the whole quarter and then Westbrook starts the second quarter. Um, One of the things, though, with two superstars coming together, it's Work, it's done well in just about everywhere it's went. The ones that have failed have been like Mello, and he's not in the league anymore. Um, you look at it like even like the, the worst example might even be the Pelicans with Boogie and Anthony Davis, and they were rolling when Boogie got hurt, and they still even did well when uh, DeMarcus Cousins got hurt, but uh, they got knocked. I think they finished as the, the three seed that year. Or they, they finished the sixth seed, and they swept Portland in the first round, but yep. uh, Cousins got hurt there. Or you could even yeah. say like the worst it's worked out is – Paul George and Westbrook, who both made the first round of the playoffs. Even with Melo, they were even a, a first-round playoff team that uh, had home court in the first round. They didn't make it out of the first round, which stinks. But that's kind of like the uh, floor of where you're headed with with uh, Harden and Westbrook. And the other thing is the Rockets were the best team in the NBA post-All-Star break last year. Yeah. So now I think everyone would say if we we're going back to July 1st, if you asked anyone – Who's better, Russell Westbrook or Chris Paul? Every single person would say Russell Westbrook. So the Rockets oh, yeah. got even better right there. Yeah. So I, th- I think it's going to be pretty well. Now, the Clippers are the best team in the West. There's no doubt about that. But the Rockets are going to be right up there competing, too. They'll be right there with the Utah and Denver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, from, from the time I was listening to you on the sports album down there, I know you're a big Texans fan, right? Yes. Um, are you a Rockets fan? I, I mean, I would imagine yeah. since you're from Houston. Ro- Rockets so. are my team, too. But I mean, okay. I'd be saying that if Russell West- if James Harden got traded here. But, but like, you weren't really upset about the trade, right, then, with, with Russell Westbrook going to Harden? Or, uh, like, uh, uh, the Houston, honestly, I didn't really like it too much for Houston. Really? It was too much to give up. Okay. Um, they're basically, it's like, now, this is our team. Westbrook Harden is what they're saying. This is how we're going to compete the next few years. And they gave up quite a bit of first-round draft picks to where, if it doesn't work out, there's no plan B. Basically, yeah. like they're not going to yeah. be able to trade. I don't think they're going to be able to get the same value back for Westbrook, and they might not even be able to for Harden, because by the time you want they want to trade him, he's not going to be you know fighting for MVPs. Yeah, you know, he'll be on the exactly. Downside. Yeah, yeah. How old is uh, Russ? I, I I can't remember Russ, how old Russ is. Russ is Thirty. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so to kind of wrap up the the NBA talk here, the the Clippers are definitely the the best in the West, and I agree fully with that. So then uh, who would you pick to win the 2020 uh, title? Would you pick the Clippers? Yeah, I think the Clippers are going to be my pick there. Uh, Milwaukee could give them a good run for the money. I don't, I don't yeah. like that Milwaukee lost Brogdon. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I like kind of like Milwaukee out of the East. Uh, Philly's going to be good. I don't think they're Milwaukee good. And Indiana might be a sneaky good team next year as well. But I don't think they're going to be finals good. I mean, I think you're pretty much looking at, I mean, there's a lot of contenders, but I think the Clippers by far are the best. And then you're looking at Milwaukee, who might be a better bet because there's a better chance they make the NBA finals than the Clippers. But uh, Utah, Denver, Houston, I think are all neck and neck for the, the next year right there. Cool, cool. You know, we've had a pretty crazy free agency so far uh, in this summer. Who do you believe has won the free agency so far? You think it's been the Clippers or the Rockets or? I mean, you got to say Clippers. That's <laughs> what I would the, say. Yeah. They got the two best free agents. I mean, yeah. I guess you could argue Brooklyn got Durant, who's a better free agent, but uh, <laughs> yeah, um, Durant's hurt right now, so you got to give the edge to Kawhi Leonard. So on this next uh, segment here, uh, you talked about how you had some OU ties yeah. and. Uh, I'm a big OU football guy. I love OU. I've loved them for since 2000 when they won their title, and I started liking them then, actually. But now that we got Jalen Hurts in um, on this college football segment here, do you think we could even go for a three-peat on a Heisman with Jalen Hurts? I'm not going to. I'm going to give OU the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say it's unlikely. You know, at this time last year, I was sitting there talking about, well, Kyler Murray's not going to be as good as Baker Mayfield, and uh, he wasn't. Yeah. He was better. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give OU the benefit of the doubt here. Uh, Jalen Hurts definitely contender. I don't think it's very likely, but 
I mean, I'll say this when it comes to quarterbacks, receivers at OU, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. When it comes to defense, I'm not. So I'll say he is a Heisman contender. I don't think he wins it. I don't think he's going to be able to beat out Trevor Lawrence. Clemson's got a pretty easy schedule. And that's more of a factor when, uh, you know, your record is more of a factor when coming to the Heisman than it should be. So I would obviously, there's a reason why Trevor Lawrence is the chalk and he's got to beat out Tua, talk about Loa, who's going to have massive stats too with Alabama. So I'd give those guys the edge, but I mean, Jalen Hurts, I definitely think could fight for it. Yeah. And I think, I think the final four this year is going to be pretty much the same. It's been every year again. Is that how you feel, you know, with OU and Bama and Clemson and, you know, maybe a Georgia or someone thrown in there? Is that who you think might be in the playoffs again? I think that's what you're looking at. Bama or Georgia, Florida, LSU have, you know, sneaky good chances, but I think we're only looking at one SEC team. Um, Ohio State, Michigan, I think also has a shot. The Big Ten will, you know, get one of those teams. Clemson, Bama, I think, are definitely in, and then you're fighting with uh, Big Ten champ, which is Ohio State, Michigan, and then you're looking at OU, I think, is probably the only Big 12 team that has a chance here. Um, Texas is a big game against LSU week three. If they win that, win the big 12, which I don't think they'll do either of that. They still got a shot of the playoffs and the pac 12 kind of just, I mean, it's been so bad, but I think Oregon, Washington, both, and maybe even USC, although I don't know if USC is going to be good enough to, uh, to go without two losses this year. I think those are the ones that have a chance, but I mean, you pick out, you can name like 10 teams in college football, and those are, you, you'll be able to pick out the four finalists out of them. There's not yeah. many that really have a shot at it. Yeah. 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 Uh, so to kind of to kind of wrap up the football talk here, what is your over-under for uh, the Sooners' win total this year? I'd say 10 wins, 10 and 2. Okay. That's where I'd pick them. Okay. Right there for the Sooners. Um, and it's hard to go 11 and 1 every year. I mean, they've done it, but it's hard to do it, especially. Yeah. And the amazing thing is, is how bad their defense has been. Yeah. Chief has been yeah. so bad, and they still only have one loss each of the last two years, not including the playoff games. Yeah. So. Yeah. Crazy. All right. So, Josh, to, to just wrap up here, man, um, uh, we, we've really enjoyed having you on the show. Um, you know, uh, I, like I said, I've been listening to you for years when you come up with all the sports animal guys. Um, so, I guess my last question to you is uh, how in the world did it make you feel when Tiger Woods won and Jim had to pay Craig? Well, I liked him paying me better. I was a part of that bet too. Yeah, right, right, right. I liked I, I liked that it happened to the Masters. Um, I was talking with with Craig about that. We always joked like, "Hey, hopefully, it, I'd rather see it happen in Augusta when you're actually there to see it." And uh, I mean, you could see it all week. You knew that Jim was. Uh, you knew that Tiger was going to win it. Jim was basically given up by that Sunday. <laughs> So it was, it was pretty cool. It's always good to win a bet. Uh, I'll be honest. I was on. I was on the side of Jim. Um, I just. I didn't think he'd ever come back, man. Like with all of his, you know, his injury and then all the stuff that he went through with with all the drug stuff, all the mental stuff, you know, that he was dealing with. I didn't think he'd come back, and he completely proved me wrong. I will say that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, like, just amazing. It's a bet that I was nervous about, but I think it's like one of those things, like people only tend to look at what's happening now instead of like what could be happening later. Like it's like when a baseball team goes in a slump by the Cubs last year, didn't start out too well. And then I think they're even four games back of the Brewers by the all-star break, or maybe it was two years ago. Um, and then they ended up winning the division by like three or four games. It's kind of like people just look at what's happening right now and not what's could happen in the future. And it was just like, Tiger just had a back back. All he needed was he got back surgery, got back to playing where he was. Yeah, so one of the all-time greats. You look at guys like Jack Nicholas, one when he was really old. So I thought it was yeah. still a possibility. And when you uh, put forever out there, I mean, you're 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 good on a bat. <laughs> I, oh yeah, and I know you and Craig, you you guys harped on him that for years because he would say, oh yeah, yeah, well you guys should have this and that or whatever. And you guys were like, yeah, forever's forever. I heard it every day, man. And I was just like, yeah, that's true. Forever's forever. <laughs> it is. It is so, a long time to win it. So absolutely, absolutely. So, well, Josh, man, we've had a we've had a good time with you on the show. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. Um, and and we hope to 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 hear from you uh, again in the future, man. Once uh, once this you know Thunder season gets on, once the OU season gets on, uh, we'd like to maybe have you on again sometime. So, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank All you, right. man. Thanks, bud. We'll see you. All right. See you.